Hello! Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I know I've been a bit of a long time between videos. I hurt my back earlier this year and it sort of put me out of action for a while. But I am back and I've got a lot of books to show you. I know I've called this a November book haul and some of them are, but there's also a couple of other months thrown in there as well because I have been buying even though I haven't been videoing this year. So let's jump into it with the one and only recipe book in the whole pile and that is the World of Warcraft cookbook. I actually bought this for Brian earlier in the year. Both of us have played World of Warcraft for a long time. It was actually when we first started dating because it was long distance for a lot of the time. It was how we kept in touch because we could chat and then do quests so it wasn't just like boring Skype session. We could actually go out and adventure together and do some fun gaming. Uh, and it's something that's kept us in touch with family as well that we're not in the same state as the family. So we all play together, different MMOs, but World of Warcraft the most. But this is all of the recipes, well not all the recipes, but a lot of the recipes from in-game that uh, Chelsea Monroe Castle has figured out how to make in the real world with a little bit of tweaking of some ingredients. But it's a lot of fun because it shows you the in-game icons for the recipe and then uh, the recipe that you can make yourself. So I'll flick through some so you can have a look. What have we got here? Iron Forge rations and then there's like the icon from in-game and it tells you about the skill level it takes to make it, the prep time servings, and then what you need to make. But for anybody that plays WoW, it's definitely a fun book. Brian and I have tried the Blizzard Bites so far, and we really like them. Next up are two books from a book swap I did earlier this year. The first is Dreamwalker by J.D. Oswald, which has a dragon on the front, so obviously something dragony, and I love dragons. And the second is Stranger With My Face by Lois Duncan, which I hadn't heard of either of these books before. Uh, this Dreamwalker is about a young boy from one kingdom in a small village and a dragon from another. And I think that they both have the fate of the two kingdoms in their hands, basically. Uh, so it's going to be an adventure, dragony story, and that sounds right up my alley. And Stranger With My Face is about a girl who suddenly is being told that she's places that she knows she wasn't uh, and then she figures out, this is all from the blurb on the back, um, that there is a long lost sister who has become very bitter over the years but she didn't know about the sister so I think it's going to be sort of a thriller maybe, I'm not certain but it sounded intriguing so I'm definitely looking forward to reading these. The next up are two from my book club, which I actually didn't get a chance to read this year. Uh, because of my back, I couldn't actually hold anything uh, like a book or a glass or anything for a long period of time. So reading for a few months was out of the question and these kind of fell to the wayside. But they're books that I definitely want to read in future when I get a chance to. First is Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. And the second is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. Both of them sound very interesting. For Shadow and Bone, it's about a girl who uh, has a crush on someone and when that person is in danger, she actually unleashes a power that she didn't know she had. So the kingdom takes her away to be trained as one of the magical elite, I guess. And then she's up against different kingdoms and things, I believe. Uh, but I think it's all about coming into your own power and it's got magic and all sorts of things. So that's gonna be fun read. I think it's a young adult. And then the fifth season, uh, is I'm not really sure because the back doesn't give a lot away and I kind of like that about it. It says that this is the end of the world for the last time and it talks about death and betrayal and catastrophe, people are missing uh, and that the earth's power is used as a weapon and that sounds very intriguing to me so this sounds like it's going to be a very good read. Next up is another book club book that I have started reading but I haven't got very far yet. Um, and it is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. This is a very good book so far, but a very slow read. I find that there is a lot of information dump um, and it takes a while to process. And that's why I had to have a little bit of break because my brain was getting a bit overloaded with all the information that was going on in there. But it is a very great, interesting world. The characters are interesting as well. But basically, because I haven't told you about it yet, it is um, a world in which magic is about different colours. Each person who can control magic can control them based on the different colours that they can see prismatically, I think that's the way it's done. Um, and then there are very few people who are called prisms who can control all different kinds of magic that are done with different colours. Um, and the main character is this prism, um, who is basically the most powerful person in the world, um, but is still kind of not free to do his own thing for certain reasons that I won't go into because it's going to be spoilers otherwise. 
Um, but there's a lot of action, adventure, definitely adventure, a lot of magic, uh, and it's just a very interesting world building, and I definitely want to finish it, and there's more than one in the series, so I recommend this so far. Next is a book that I bought that sounded interesting to me, which is Futuristic Violence and Fancy Suits by David Wong. I actually bought this way back at the beginning of the year and haven't had a chance to read it yet. Uh, but it sounds very intriguing because it's a futuristic city where I think people can choose enhancements for themselves. So you've got sort of nightmarish villainy people and there's an all-seeing eye network. There's a lot of technology and advancements in this. But it sounds like it also has a good humorous edge to it. There's a smelly cat referenced on the back of the book. The reviews seem very good. If you've read it, let me know. Um, this is kind of not going along the sort of usual magic and urban fantasy route that I read, but it did sound really, really good. Next is Ever the Hunted by Erin Summerill. I absolutely love this cover. I bought this as soon as it came out because I wanted the hardback because it's just so beautiful, that book cover. Look at it. Look at it. It's just gorgeous. Uh, and then it sat on my to be read pile because I couldn't hold it for a while with my back. But it seems to have a very uh, fairy tale kind of vibe going on, which I like. Um, and it is about a girl who um, is good with a bow and arrow in the forest, so you know, very fairy tale kind of feel. And then her father is killed, and she becomes this outcast and she's given the opportunity to try and find her father's killer. So I think she's sort of got to work with other people that she doesn't really trust. Um, that doesn't sound like I'm doing it justice, to be honest, but it just sounded like a very interesting take on different fairy tale elements. Um, and I loved the cover, so I bought it. I know you're not supposed to do that, but I did. I loved it, and I can't wait to read it. Next is a book from the same people that do a podcast of the same name, which is Welcome to Night Vale by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Craner. And this I have read. It is, if you've heard the podcast, podcast, you'll know it's about the town of Night Vale. If you haven't heard the podcast, I recommend it because it's very good. Um, it is a very weird and mysterious town where crazy strange things happen. Think sort of um, Hitchhiker's Guide, Futurama kind of humour to it, um, but different, <laughs> very different. But if you like those, I'd give the podcast a listen and maybe check the book out as well. Next up is Golden Sun by Pierce Brown, and this is book two in the Red Rising trilogy. And I think there's just a fourth book has come out in the same world as this. Um, that I don't know if it's a continuation or a prequel or what, but anyway, this is book two in the trilogy. Red Rising was one of my favourite reads of this year, actually. Uh, it was something that I wasn't sure whether to jump into or not, um, because the reviews were kind of over the top crazy. And I'm so glad I did because it is such a, such a good book. And I'm really hoping the second one continues with that kind of a good feel about it. Uh, but this is going to be Darrow, the main character, continuing on in his journey uh, for change. And hopefully, well, maybe not hopefully, but he's got to try and stay away from going after vengeance. Kind of hope he does go for vengeance, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. I suppose I should add, if you're not familiar with the trilogy, Red Rising is set in space about a colony on Mars which who are miners, um, very low class, and they do all the mining so that the upper classes can survive, I guess. Um, and Darrow is one of those miners who manages to infiltrate the upper class. Um, I'm not going to say more than that because that's what you'll learn anyway from the back cover. Um, but it is not really sci-fi, it's more action-adventure. Uh, there is a little bit of science fiction in there as well, but not overly so. And there is a little bit of space thrown in there, but not overly so. It's kind of its own mashup of genres, uh, and I really, really, really enjoyed it. And last, but by no means least, is my second favourite read of the year. Not second favourite, but my second favourite, tied for number one spot which is We Are Legion, We Are Bob by Dennis E. Taylor. This is a book that I would not have picked up. It doesn't sound like anything that I would normally read, but my book club read it, so I thought, well, I've got to get on with it. And I'm so, so glad somebody suggested this book. It is really, really good. It is sci-fi, it's set in space and kind of on Earth. It's about a guy who dies and has himself cryogenically frozen so that if in future they figure out a way to bring him back, that then he can be brought back and the dog and cat are going crazy so please ignore them running around 
Um, but he does get brought back when in a completely different way than he realised that he would. And it's sort of an exploration, adventure, sci-fi, geeky story. Really well written. There's sort of um, action adventure in it. There's um, lots of references to nerdy things. I don't really know how else to describe it. You kind of need to experience it for yourself. If you like anything that's along that sort of lines, you will really like this book, I think. And it's the first in a trilogy. I've heard that the audiobook is even better than the paper book. Um, I'm not a fan of audiobooks, so I chose for this one. But everyone else in the book did the audiobook and said how much that they really enjoyed it. So that's something to think about. Uh, but yeah, this is just brilliant. So that's it for my November book haul with a couple of other months thrown in there as well. I hope you've enjoyed seeing all of the books that I bought throughout those months through the year um, and hearing about them. And let me know if you've got any other suggestions for me to buy because I've been a little bit out of the book buying loop this year as I haven't really focused on what's coming out and I need to look at what's coming up next year. So any suggestions, leave them down below. I'm going to go and make sure that the dog and cat don't kill each other while they're chasing each other around. So. I will see you next time. Bye.